Hi, I'm Jay Garstecki. Welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. Please join me in the boat today as we fish with Rich Verdoni, a U.S. Army Ranger, as he shares his military experience with us. Military veterans protect our great nation. Pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson made it their duty to honor our heroes. They want to share soldiers' stories. The perfect place to carry out this mission, a fishing boat. Get ready to launch Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. Today's mission takes us north of the U.S. border to Canada's Eagle Lake. How beautiful. Wow. Oh, that's Look at gorgeous. This. Oh, that is so cool. Hey, so if I catch like a trophy fish, yeah. does someone have a technological advanced device to prove that I did that rather than it be a fish story? U.S. Army Ranger veteran Rich Verdone won't let cold weather get to him. If, if the rod touches the water, the fish jump on board, I get it. This may be just the beginning of Rich's fishing Sorry. experience. He got off. Nope, still got him. He bit and I thought he took my fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad when the guy holding the pole doesn't know that he caught something. <laughs> That's why I didn't know. That's exactly why I didn't know, man. Rich's combat experience included six army deployments. I don't expect that someone would be as proficient as you are as a fisherman, or could honestly call themselves a fisherman if they'd been doing that job for three weeks or 11 weeks. There's still so much to learn. Is that, is that lunch, or is could it Could they be prepared to go out and catch fish? Sure. Could they be proficient at it? Absolutely. I have no doubt that they could. But in, in my mind, I wouldn't call myself a fisherman in 11 weeks. 11 weeks, the average length of a military boot camp. 11 weeks doesn't dehumanize you, doesn't brainwash you. 11 weeks gets you prepared physically and mentally to accept the job that you're gonna do. Rich completed his first boot camp in 2001. I joined at 17 and a half. My, my mother signed the papers, wound up not getting much of the things that I really wanted and when the Army came back with an option for a contract, uh, I signed and said, you know, let's send me off. First stop, Fort Benning, Georgia. A totally different environment. The South hadn't really been there, which for a kid from California was like Jurassic Park to me. <laughs> Fort Benning is a unique uh, part of the military culture. In the middle of my, my basic, basic combat training, about towards the end, really, 9-11 uh, occurred. I mean, civilian airliners into, into civilian buildings is just, I know the world is not a fair place, but that's one of those, you just don't cross those lines. Like a, a price had to be paid for that. Rich suspected his training would lead to a profound assignment. Sure enough, it was so cliche just being in, in combat training that uh, there's the immediate possibility that we're going to be at war. Training quickly ramped up. Rich prepared for deployment in Afghanistan. My path um, had ramped up intensely. Rich joined the 3rd Battalion of the elite 75th Ranger Regiment. Uh, went through Airborne, went through Ranger Selection, uh, the Ranger Indoctrination Program to get to um, 75th Ranger Regiment. I was assigned to 3rd Bat, 3rd Battalion. Russell. You tired, Ranger? You need some more sleep? Now well, here I am as this young adult. Hey, these are your tasks, this is your job, this is your lifestyle. We're also at war, so to go and do that, now you're gonna do all these rehearsals and things you've been trained up to, you're gonna practice them. Within months, uh, we did our 
our train-up cycles. Operation Rhino, a U.S. operation to chase the Taliban out of Afghanistan. Rhino had just kicked off, which was heavily televised. Um, you know, Rangers jumping into Afghanistan in October of 2001, uh, weeks following the, the attack, which then opened up, you know, the ability for all the conventional forces to, to slide into Afghanistan. Sure enough, the very next cycle or wave of Rangers was, was our battalion. Not even a year in service yet, I found myself in a, in a combat zone with the very best that I knew that our country had to offer. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips. Recon Boats, and by Evinrude Outboards. On Canada's Eagle Lake, a symbol of American freedom soars. Wow. Look at this. In the boat. Oh, we got fish. That's good. U.S. Army veteran Rich Verdone and host Jay Garstecki work on their mission. We now we just got to bring them to the boat. <laughs> We're catching them by the pounds. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Four combat deployments took Rich to both Iraq and Afghanistan. He fought as a U.S. Army Ranger. Not even a year in service yet, I found myself in a, in a combat zone. Rich shipped off to Afghanistan only weeks after the terrorist attack on the Twin Towers. You go in there and you think, yeah, I mean, we are amazing. We, are, we, we can do great things. Uh, we've rehearsed and trained this over and over and over again. We're ready for, for the possibility that we need to deploy contingencies or that we would have to fight through certain things that weren't thought of completely. At the point where we had our first casualties, I, I, I wasn't ready for that. I, I just, I really wasn't. And uh, Rich would experience great loss in war. Uh, QRF went and brought them back and uh, the team, after an IED, went off. And um, the, the gun truck that he was in was just riddled, uh, mangled. There's, there's, there's brain matter and there's parts of him all over the back of that truck. If you did not know him before, you wouldn't have recognized what was left. There are people that, that are not processing this logically, and I can tell. I can see that there's just disarray in people's face. Um, what do we do now? Rich felt compelled to go to work. I grabbed two other rangers and said, let's, let's clean this, let's, let's, let's take care of this. Um, we just, we started cleaning the truck, and the blood from the truck filled the air to the point where you could just, you could taste it. It was just, it was everywhere. And um, the loss of a soldier so profound. This person has a family. I knew that this person um, is not just a number or a metric. His final moments were spent in the back of this truck doing what he loved and what, what we were asked to do. You know, having a final roll call where, where you have um, someone's name called out to the point where we all know that that, that ranger is no longer with us. And to hear the name called several times and then to have it defined or describe what happens to that ranger and why he's not a part of this formation, that's, that's where the novelty, everything, every aspect of it just left. You know, war and the violence of war is something that really just grabs you by the face, and 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 uh, you don't have all the answers. 
The violence of war would linger deep within Rich, even as he returned home for good in 2015. I really had some serious falling out issues. I had convinced myself that I was okay and that it, this deployment hadn't affected me and that, you know, the previous deployments were still behind me. I came to a point where the reality was is that I was utilizing um, alcohol at levels that were excessive. I blacked out on, on the, the leg from LAX to Phoenix and wound up taking on um, an air marshal, a flight, a flight attendant, and an off-duty police officer on the plane and uh, came into consciousness in custody um, from LAPD. Rich's colonel showed up to bail him out of jail. When he found out I was arrested, spoke with the chief of police, um, explained to them who I was. I have no criminal record and they released me to his custody. And he said, look, I've already spoke to your current command. Um, they want you to, you're in a leadership role there. They want you in front of their men still. They're willing to help you, but you're gonna have to do something about this. Colonel Jones knew the creator of what's now the Sparta Project. You're gonna go under the wire? There you go. When I realized hell isn't where I'm going in this program, I'm not, I'm not being asked to go um, through a different hell. Um, hell's where I've been, and, and this is the, the doorway to, to the other side. And you just have to be willing to go through it. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, SKB Cases, and by St. Croix Rods. Have like a little fish off. How many you caught so far? The fisherman answer would be eight. <laughs> the real answer is like three or four, yeah. <laughs> We're catching them by the pounds. <laughs> if you're a U.S. military veteran living in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, or Florida, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. U.S. Army Ranger Rich Verdone's journey took him literally around the world. The second and third deployment was heavily focused on raid operations and airfield seizure operations. By all accounts, today's assignment seems <laughs> simple. Just catch a few fish. Oh, that's lunch size for sure. Such is life on Ontario's Eagle Lake. Drive wear shoes? I try not to. Rich brought along a sense of humor, but seems to have forgotten something else. You know, touching my, my feet uh, to the bare water, to the bare ground, just helps me feel grounded. So when I'm out here trying to enjoy all of this, and you guys, um, the fishing experience overall, I try and be as grounded as I can. Rich has not always felt that way. Going from one combat zone to just to get there is its own process to come home from that is a process a process to recovery rich would discover through something called the sparta project the sparta project is a five and a half day program we use alternative type of methods they're non-medical uh, approaches to alternative holistic healing aspects i guess you could say The Sparta Project is free for anyone who has served. It doesn't matter if you were slinging mashed potatoes in the chow tent or if you were the tip of the spear. The tip of the spear might just describe combat life for a U.S. Army Ranger. We were doing two or three missions a night. Iraqi locals coined a term for Rich's team, the devil with green eyes. The green eyes comes from the glare that reflects from our NVGs. Whenever you'd see our trucks and our, our groups show up, um, people would disappear in the neighborhood. Rich returned home from war in 2015. I came home 
had problems, got arrested. Um, my problems for the first time spilled out into the public eye. He searched for a new purpose. And so Rich came to us as a care seeker. His experiences caused a lot of challenges for him when he tried to reintegrate back into civilian life. And I thought that this program in California would be the last, you know, five days of my life. It's a great way to spend the last five days. We learn to suppress fear to be able to function in those risk environments. When we repress things like fear or sadness, we repress joy, happiness, love, and we take that vulnerability and we apply it to a ropes course, we slow it down. We put on a harness, the helmet, the rope, so it's safe. A feeling Rich had not experienced in a long, long time. To anybody who has ever served in any of our branches of military, you have a home with us. You absolutely have a home with us and you deserve it. If you'd like to thank one of the veterans featured on our show, go to OperationFishingFreedom.com and we'll make sure they get your message. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Optima Batteries, Temple Bay Lodge, and by PowerPole. Sets. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Cold feet and laughter. <laughs> Describe a day on the lake. Veteran Rich Verdoni covets time on the water. Uh, boat ride was great. Felt like I was in an off-road monster truck the whole way here. Coming from an environment in a place where you are defending your country, where you are in combat. How do you just come back to this place where it is grocery stores and traffic? Learning to cope would include a climb to the top of a 40-foot pole. It's my belief that when they enter into a, a military or a war situation, um, there are certain switches, emotional switches, that are turned off. The Sparta Project works to help veterans gently turn that emotional switch back on. There's no cure for being me. I'm, I'm always going to be me. Um, but the lens that I see the world through and how I interpret my environment has changed. I would say that our goal and our responsibility is to take traumatizing experiences and turn it into traumatic growth. You don't tear down the warrior. You don't, you don't throw it away. You don't make it. You don't unmake it. Um, you repurpose it. You give it a new purpose, a new life. If there's intense wisdom that they have. Don't, don't let go of that. Rich credits the Sparta Project for giving his life back. I understand my triggers. I understand the things that, that do have a negative impact on me and my environment. And so it encouraged me to be better than my environment rather than focusing on the trauma and the negative aspects. So I look at Rich as being a really great example. He came as a care seeker, whereas he might have felt hopeless and that his life only was useful on the battlefield. Nothing could be further from the truth. Rich gets to be the dude who's been there, walked the walk, now gets to talk the talk and demonstrate that you really can transform post-traumatic stress into post-traumatic growth growth that is clearly prevalent and rich as we fish these cold Canadian waters. Well, I want to honor you with something. <laughs> On behalf of Operation Fishing Freedom, oh God, <laughs> I would like to present to you this customized Operation Fishing Freedom Get fishing out of rod. Here, man. This is and it has oh, man. your name, so in appreciation of your service and sacrifice, Rich Verdoni. That's a gem. I appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Turns out, 
on this day, in this place, Rich offers his own gift. But, uh, this is kind of a calling card or flag that we flew on our gun trucks. Um, it's been to Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, Jolly Rogers was just something that you know, touched a home for us in a place that we didn't really like you know, all too much. Every time I leave the country, this is what I bring with me. <laughs> it's a tough decision, but um, I'm going to dedicate it to the Lodge for the courtesy that they've shown us. You know, Temple Bay has just been great, and so this will just be for all the other veterans that are going to come behind us. The act, a clear indication of Rich's new mission in life. I can't say I'll be a professional fisherman, and hopefully I catch more fish than give away minnows with this thing in the future. <laughs> I did. I thought it was, I totally thought it was going to be a rain suit. You caught me off guard with this. If you enjoyed today's show and you'd like to nominate a vet for a future episode, please log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the Nominate a Vet button. <laughs>